Hello and welcome to the Natural History Museum Homework Club Quiz. I'm Alison and I work with the learning team at the museum. Now, some of you might be new to our homework club, so I'll, I'll very quickly tell you what it's all about. So every week in Homework Club, we have a different nature theme. And each day at 9.30, we share a fun challenge for you to do at home or at school. These challenges are linked to topics like science, art, English, and even maths. Now we post the challenges on our Twitter channel, which is at NHM underscore learn. But if your adults and teachers aren't on Twitter, it's not a problem because you can find them on our Homework Club webpage as well. And we absolutely love it when you share your work with us. So if you do complete any of our challenges and you want to share them with us, ask your adult to use the hashtag NHM Homework Club on Twitter and we can see them. In fact, I think we have some awesome wildlife art sent in by a couple of our homework clubbers. Yes, we do. By Tommy, age six, and Alexander, age two and a half, did these brilliant Robin artworks as part of our homework club. I think they're amazing. I think that you will all agree. Very well done. And thank you so much to Tommy and Alexander. Now, as part of homework club, each Friday, there's going to be a live quiz like this one. And we're going to be testing some of the things that we've been learning throughout the week. Now, you can make a mini team wherever you're watching, or if you're feeling particularly brave, you can have a go at answering the questions by yourself. So a very big welcome to all of you quizzers today. If you're watching us on YouTube, do say hello in the chat. We would love to know that you're there. And while you're in the chat, I just want to draw your attention to our donation button. We are a charity and we do need your help. With our doors closed at the moment, we are losing vital income. So if you're able to, if you're happy to, if you can spare us a small donation, uh, no matter how small, we would very much appreciate it. If you're watching on YouTube, the, uh, the donate button is just above the chat. If you're watching us on our Natural History Museum website, it's at the top of the page in the right hand corner. Now, this week's quiz is all about winter wildlife. So I'm all snoodled up in, in my winter woolly here. I hope you are too, and you're ready for some chilly challenges. Now, as part of our quiz, we are excitingly also gonna be joined by some of our brilliant learning team at both the Natural History Museum in London and at Tring. So let's say hello now to our team. We have Tom from the Natural History Museum in London. We also have Aisha from the Natural History Museum in London. Hey. Brilliant. And finally, from our museum in Tring, we have Nigel. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, guys. You all look absolutely amazing. I feel a little bit underdressed, actually. <laughs> wow. Look at this. Now, our learning team, they've been working so hard putting together all the challenges for our quiz. So we thought it was only fair that they joined us. So they're going to be playing along with our quiz. And just like last week, we're not going to be asking you to compete against these three because that might be a little bit unfair. They might have a, an advantage working at the museum. So instead, they're going to be our team captains. And you at home are going to be able to choose which of their teams you want to join. So you can join Tom's team, you can join Aisha's team, or you can join Nigel's team. And at the end of the quiz, you'll get to add whatever your team captain scores to your own scores, which could be a really nice boost if you choose wisely. So to help you choose at home, let's find out a little bit about each of our team captains. So let's start, first of all, with Tom. Tell us about your team. Yes. Hello, I'm Tom. Hello again. I'm shedding my dino feathers from last week for something of the crustacean persuasion. Mm. So during this week's winter wildlife challenges, I've been finding loads of wood lice. So today I'm going to be team woodlouse. That's right. We're going to be eating away or any rotten, difficult questions that come our way as wood lice like to eat that rotten wood. <laughs> that is brilliant. And I love a mini bee. So, so team woodlouse. Ooh, I mean, very tempting to join your team, Tom. And that, that little, uh, little woodlouse dance you've got going on there is fantastic. So if you're up for joining Team Woodhouse, uh, Team Tom, it, it's Team Woodlouse. But what about Aisha? Tell us about your team. Hi. Hi. 
I am Team Hedgehog. It is one of my favourite British animals and it's also one of my favourite Makatons. Well, the sign for Hedgehog in Makaton is Hedgehog. Can you do that with me? Hedgehog. So I am Team Hedgehog. We, of course, are going to do fantastically well on all of our questions. So maybe you want to join Team Hedgehog today. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that Makaton sign and, and hedgehogs are so adorable. They're very, very cute. So I think you'll probably persuade quite a few people to join your team, Aisha. And last, but by no means least, we have Nigel. Tell us about your team. Hi, everyone. I'm Nigel. And this week, as you can probably tell by my lovely ears, I am team mountain hair. Uh, now, mountain hairs change colour from brown to white during the winter to camouflage with the snow. And that means that the competition will never see me coming. Uh, and this week during homework club, uh, I tried some bird spotting and I made some notes about them like a real ornithologist. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, team mountain hair there hiding from the competition. Excellent. And you know what, Tom, not to give, uh, Nigel, not to give too much away, but I think that those big ears of yours might come in handy a little bit later on in our quiz. But we'll see. So there you have it, our three teams to choose from, but which one will you choose? Let us know in the comments which ones you're choosing. And team captains, we will say goodbye to you for now, but we'll see you a little bit later on. And whilst you, whilst you decide which team you'd like to choose, I'll just tell you the rules of our quiz. So we have three rounds and there are four questions each. Now we're gonna ask a question. We're gonna give you a short time to think about your answer, but then we're gonna reveal the answer more or less straight away, which means you don't have to remember or write down any of your answers. But what you will have to do is to keep a track of your scores as you go along. You're gonna get one point for each question. So there's a maximum of 12 points available in our quiz today. Now, do chat in amongst your teams at home about each of the answers, but we please, please, please ask that you don't put any of your, of your answers in our YouTube chat. And if you do see anyone putting their answers in the chat, don't be tempted to copy their answer because they might not have it right. Now, I can see that we've been choosing our team captains. We've got a few for Mountain Hair and Team Woodlass. Oh, and Team Hedgehog as well. Fantastic. So I think we are almost ready to start our quiz. Let's just very quickly check in with our team captains to check that they are ready. Team captains, can you all give me a big thumbs up if you are good to go? Excellent. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. So let's crack on with the first round of our quiz, which is a uh, winter wildlife general knowledge round. Now, for our quest, first question, we have a simple true or false. Now, yesterday we pulled on our woolly boots. We went hunting for mini beasts like beetles, snails and woodlice. And we asked you to draw a diagram of a woodlice in your nature journal. But can you tell us, are woodlice insects? True or false, woodlice are insects. It's a bit of a tricky this one, this one, isn't it? Have a, have a bit of a think. Maybe discuss it in your teams at home if you have them, whether you think this is true or false. How might we tell if something is an insect? Well, hopefully you have your answers ready because we can reveal the answer is in fact False. Woodlice are not insects. They're actually crustaceans, like similar to crabs and lobsters. Now, that might, the question might have fucked some of you. You might have got that wrong. So I think we should bring in our team captain, Tom, from Team Woodlouse to explain. Tom, how can we tell you're not an insect? Oh, well, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, insects are one of the most diverse groups of animals on this planet, but I am certainly not one of them. Because insects, you need to identify by looking for three body parts and three pairs, so six legs. And I've got 14 legs. Far too many. Yes, I, I've seen you've got quite a few legs there, Tom. So 14 <laughs> legs, definitely too many for an insect. 
That's fantastic. That's really, really good to know. So thank you so much for clearing that up, Tom. And well done to you at home. If you got that question correct, you get one point. But on to question two. Now, when the weather gets a little bit chilly, it can be tempting to snuggle up somewhere cosy and warm and just stay there. There are some animals we, we just don't see at this time of year because they do exactly that. And some animals will even hibernate. They'll wait out the winter months by hibernating, which we can think of as an extreme form of slowing down. They'll slow down their breathing, their heart rate, use as little energy as possible and just wait out the winter. But which of these animals hibernates for winter? Can you tell us? Is it A, grey squirrels, B, frogs, or C, foxes? Which of these three UK animals do you think hibernates for winter? Squirrels, frogs, or foxes? Maybe have a think about what animals you've, you've seen um, lately out and about and what animals you, you haven't seen so much of. Now, are you ready for your answer? Let's reveal the answer is in fact, frogs. Very well done. If you got that correct, you won't see frogs about this time of year. They are cold blooded. They can't generate their own um, internal body heat. So instead their body temperature depends on their surroundings. So in winter, as it gets colder, they begin to be less active. So frogs will hibernate through the winter somewhere dark, somewhere damp, somewhere safe from predators like the bottom of a pond or on underneath some damp logs or leaves. So very well done. If you got that question correct, you get one point. Now, question three. We are going to be putting our counting skills to the test for this question, as well as our powers of observation. Now, one varied way of discovering what animals are around this time of year is to look out for the traces that they leave behind, like footprints on muddy ground, or if you're lucky enough to have it, in snow. So we're going to show you a picture of some animal tracks in snow, and we want you to count how many individual footprints you can see. Now you're gonna to have to be very quick because you're only gonna have 15 seconds to do this. So we need speedy counting here. So are we ready? Remember, you've got to count the number of individual footprints. Okay, let's go. incredibly quick, quickly so so well done if, if you managed to count all of them there were quite a few how did you do I think I managed to get all of them there was the one that was a little bit tricky it was a little bit uh, faded and behind another one but we can reveal there were in fact 22 footprints 22 bird prints in the snow. So very, very well done if you managed to count all of those in such quick time. Now, if you've ever wondered what wildlife wanders through your garden when you're not watching, you can try making your own footprint tunnel at home. There is a really brilliant video on our website showing you how to make one. So, so check that video out after the quiz. But if you manage to get 22 footprints, you get one point. They're very well done. But we're on to our final question of round one. Now, in the winter, we put on our woolly hats, our warm coats to keep nice and cosy. But animals have different ways of keeping warm. Birds, for example, are active this time of year. They need ways to keep cosy. But which of the following do birds not do to keep themselves warm? Is it A, puff up their feathers? Is it B? snuggle together and roost in groups? Is it C, stand on one leg? Or is it D, curve up in leaves? Which of those is a way that birds do not 
keep themselves warm in winter. It's a bit of a tricky one, this, because they all do sound like quite good ideas, don't they? But one of them isn't quite right. Is it A, puff up their feathers, B, snuggle together, C, stand on one leg, or D, cover themselves in leaves? Well, we hope you have your answer ready. We can reveal it is, in fact, cover themselves in leaves. So very well done if you guessed that one was correct. Birds don't actually do this. Even though it sounds like a good idea, you might struggle to find leaves in winter. And I think leaves this time of year might be quite cold and soggy. It would be a very soggy blanket but they do all of those other things. So when birds fluff up their feathers, they trap air close to their bodies, which keeps them nice and warm. By standing on one leg, it lets them tuck the other leg up under their body to keep that leg warm. And some birds, as we can see in this brilliant picture here, they do cuddle together to roost to keep themselves warm. So very well done. Again, congratulations if you guessed that one right, it was D but we have reached the end of the first round of our quiz. So let's see how you did. Add up your scores. Let us know in the YouTube comments how you did in that round. Remember, there were four points up for grabs, but let's see how our team captains did. Let's bring in each of our team captains and we'll see how they did with round one. Hi, welcome back, guys. How did you do in that in that round? Was was it was it hard? Was it difficult? Let's let's find out. Tom, first of all, Team Woodlouse. How did you do? Well, we did quite well. Uh, I can only count up to fourteen with my legs, so I didn't get the footprints question. Um, and I thought everything would want to keep warm under leaves, so we, we got two points for that round. Very well done to Team Woodlouse. That's excellent. Um, Aisha, Team Hedgehog. How did you do? Yeah, we did really well. We got two points. I think the one that really confused us was the leaves, because as hedgehogs, we think leaves are really nice and warm. But we were impressed that birds found so many other ways to stay. Brilliant, brilliant. Well done to Team Hedgehog. And finally, Team Mountain Hare, how about you? How did you do? Well, because woodlice have lots of legs and they live under logs, we thought that they might be insects. Um, and I always thought that squirrels hibernated. So I learned that today. And um, so I got two points in total. Excellent. So well done again to Team Mountain Hare. So this is great. So at the moment with our team captains, it, it's two points each. So it's it's neck and neck. And we've had some scores coming in from our viewers too. Um, Nakul has got two out of four, which is excellent. Ezekiel, again, two out of four, brilliant. Oh, Team Crustacean Persuasion, great name, has got three out of four. So congratulations to all of our quizzes online as well, doing a fantastic job. But that was just round one. There's still a lot left to play for. So we'll say goodbye to our team captains for now. We'll see you again in a little bit. But it's time to move on to our second round, which is our sounds round. Now, we, when we're discovering the wildlife around us, we don't just look, we can use our other senses too. Now, this week, our team captains, Nigel and Aisha, they were looking for what birds they could spot around them. But another great way to find out what birds are around this time of year is to listen out for them. So for our first question, we have some bird sounds. Now, some birds cope with the changing seasons by moving somewhere warmer, by migrating. Lots of our UK birds head somewhere warm for the winter. But some birds arrive in the UK, interestingly enough. They will have travelled from somewhere even colder, like Iceland. So here we have three birds that you might see and hear here in the UK over winter. We have the field fair, the whipper swan and the robin. Now, I'm going to play you the sounds that each of these birds make. And you're going to need to listen very, very carefully because I'm then going to play you a mystery sound. And I want you to match the mystery sound to one of those three sounds that you just heard. And you're going to work out which bird made our mystery sound. So I'm going to play you our, each of, of our bird songs first of all. First of all, I'm going to play you the field fair.
So lovely sound there from the field fair. Next stop is our whooper swan. Definitely a sound that I recognise. That was our Rufus one. And finally, I'm going to play you our Robin. So those were our three bird sounds. I'm now going to play you a mystery sound. And I want you to match our mystery sound to one of those three bird sounds. Guess which of our three birds made it. So here is our mystery sound. So which of our three birds here do you think made that mystery sound? Which was it most similar to, do you think? Was it the field fair? Was it the whooper swan? Or was it our little robin? Maybe chat in your teams if you're not too sure. If you're not sure at all, have a guess. You've got three chances, you might get it right. But we can reveal our mystery sound was the field fair. So very well done. If you managed to guess it was the field fair, if you managed to match that bird sound, it was quite tricky. So congratulations, you get one point if you guessed our mystery field fair sound. Now, our second question in our sound round is all about foxes. You might have seen them out and about at night time this time of year, but have you ever heard the extraordinary sounds that foxes make at night time this time of year? I'm going to play you one just now. You might hear that sound at nighttime this time of year. It's made by a fox. It's extraordinary. It sounds like they're screaming. But why on earth do they make this sound? What do these noises mean? Why do foxes scream at nighttime this time of year? Is it A, because they're cold? B, because they're fighting? C, because they're looking for a mate? Or D, because they're hungry? Why do foxes scream at night time? Is it because they're cold, fighting, looking for a mate or hungry? Now, I don't know about you, but I can get quite noisy when I'm hungry. But is it the same for foxes? What do you think? Have a guess. Why could they be making that noise? Well, hopefully you've got your answers ready because we can reveal the answer is See, they are looking for a mate. Believe it or not, that is the noise that a vixen, a female fox, will make look uh, will make when she is looking for a mate. Now, I'm not sure I could attract a partner by screaming at them, but it seems to work pretty well for foxes. So, very well done. If you guessed it was C, they were looking for a mate. You get one point. Now, for our Third question, we have another mystery sound that we're going to play you. But this time, we want you to guess what the sound is. So listen very, very carefully. This sound is a, it's a little strange, but it might be familiar too. I'm going to play our sound. We're going to give you three options here for what it might be. 
So let's hear our sound. So what was that sound? Was it A, a badger eating its dinner? Uh, sorry, a rabbit eating its dinner. Was it B, the call of a badger? Or was it C, footsteps crunching through snow? So let's hear it one more time. Was that mystery sound a rabbit crunching its dinner? Was it the call of a badger? Or was it footsteps crunching through the snow? Well, hopefully you've guessed this one correctly. We can reveal the answer is C, footsteps in the snow. A fantastic noise. I think there is absolutely nothing better than crunching through fresh snow. And if you've been out and about looking for nature lately, you might have been lucky enough to make this sound yourself. Now. We're moving on to our final question of our sounds round. Now, we've been doing lots and lots of really good listening, but for our final question this round, I think it's time we all made some noise ourselves. So I have a challenge for you at home and for our team captains. We've um, heard lots of bird sounds. We're gonna make some sounds of our own. So let's bring our team captains in now. Here they are. <laughs> Hello again, team captains. Hopefully you guys are up a bit of a noisy challenge. So we, we've heard some lovely bird songs earlier, but there is one bird sound that I absolutely love, and that's the sound of an owl, the hoot of an owl. So what I would like you to do, all of you, is to have a go at making your best owl sound for me. And remember, quizzes at home, you can play along as well. We want you to make an owl sound too. You get one point for the best hoot, the best owl noise that you can make. So, team captains, are you up for the challenge? Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, let's start with team Woodlouse. Let's have your owl sound. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Screech Owl, that's absolutely brilliant. I was going to say, fantastic. Very well done, Team Woodlouse. I liked that one. How about Team Hedgehog? Hey, Team Hedgehog is going to go all in for this one. So I'm going to use some added props. Are you ready? That was rather beautiful, Team Hedgehog. A very <laughs> traditional twitch move. Very nice indeed. Oh, this is tricky. And finally, Team Mountain Hare. Go for it. Ooh, quite a haunting hoot there. That was very nice indeed. And quizzes at home, let's hear your owl noises. Let's go for a hoot. Brilliant. Fantastic. Now, Oh, it's quite tricky to choose one winner out of all of those owl noises. You all did so brilliantly. They were all so different as well because owls all make such different noises. Do you know what? I feel very generous. I'm going to give you all a point. Points all round for this one, this question. You all did so well. One point to all of our team captains and one point to all of you at home quizzes for doing your owl noises. Thank you so much. A bit noisy and a bit silly with me. You're all very, very good sports. Thank you. Team captains, it's time to move on to our final round. So we'll, we'll say goodbye to you now, for now. We'll see you a little bit later on. Now, oh, we need our scores, actually. I almost forgot. <laughs> At the end of our round here, we should have our scores. So again, let us know in the, the comments. Um, what you got for that second round, our sounds round. And let's let's bring our team captains back in quickly to find out how they did. I forgot about our scores. I'm so sorry, guys. 
welcome back. So how did you do? Well, I know you all did really well in that final question there. You all got one point. But what about the rest of that round? Team Woodlouse, how did you do? Well, we, we're glad we got the owl point or we would have only got one. Uh, the other one we got was the field fair noise because we would like to know our predators during the summer. Mm. Uh, during the winter, the wheat berries, though, so we're fairly OK with it. So we got two. Very good. Team Woodlouse, two points. Team Hedgehog. We had another fantastic round and we got another two points as well. So we were super happy about our one for the owl. And we also got the sound of the crunching footsteps right as well. So two points. Very excited about that. Very good. That was a tricky one. So very well done. And finally, Team Mountain Hare, how did you get on this round? Well, I have to say, as you hinted at the beginning, my large sensitive ears were very useful for that round because I've got pretty good hearing. So I managed to get four points. Excellent. I thought you might do very well in that round, Team Mountain here. Those, those ears are a big advantage. So very, very well done. I can see some scores as well coming in from our quizzes at home. Rosie had three out of four. Nigel got four out of four. There's another Nigel watching, Nigel. <laughs> Fantastic scores from you at home as well. Very well done, all of you. But again, we've got one round left to go. So there is still all to play for. So let's, for now, say goodbye to our team captains. We will see them again a little bit sh shortly. But it is now time to move on to our third and our final round of our quiz. And this one is a bit of a prickly one. It's all about one of my favourite animals that we've been learning about this week in Homework Club. But I'm not going to tell you which animal it is because we want you to guess. That's our first question of our final round. Now, listen very, very carefully, because Rosie, our brilliant quiz master from our dino quiz last week, is going to describe a mystery animal for us. Can you work out what this animal is from the description? So let's now hear from Rosie about our mystery animal. This animal is quite small, about 20 to 30 centimetres long. It has a pointy snout with a little black nose on the end. It also has a small tail, but this is normally covered up. And usually this animal is brown in colour, although sometimes they can be blonde. And across its body, it has lots of short, sharp spines. Oh, thank you there, Rosie. Some brilliant um, hints there, some great clues. Uh, the little uh, the clue about the little snout, the pointy snout, I think was a really, really good one. But probably the best clue was all of those spines that she mentioned, wasn't it? Can you guess what our mystery animal was? Well, yes, we can tell you it was, in fact, a hedgehog. Of course it was. A fantastic hedgehog. Now, Earlier, team captain Aisha showed us the Makaton sign for hedgehog. So well done if you got that, that answer right. But for our next question, question two, we want you to see if you can remember what the Makaton sign for hedgehog actually is. Do you remember? Have a go at doing that sign for us now. I can't see you, but I'm going to trust that you're doing it. Now, let's bring back our team captain from Team Hedgehog, Aisha, to show us if we got it right or not. Hi, welcome back, Aisha, Team Hedgehog. Yeah, we're loving this round so far. I think we might do well. Let's see how everyone got on with Makaton sign for Hedgehog. If you got okay. Hedgehog, well done. Hedgehog. Brilliant. So give yourselves one point if you did that sign or something close to it. Very well done. You have learned the Makaton sign for hedgehog. One point. Now, our next hedgehog question, question three, is another simple true or false. Can you tell us, are baby hedgehogs called hoglet? True or false? Baby hedgehogs are called hoglet. Have a little think about this one. Maybe think about 
um, some of the names for other baby animals that, that, that might be similar. What do you think? Is it true or false? Are baby hedgehogs called hoglets? Well, if you've got your answer ready, we can reveal it is in fact true. They are indeed called hoglets, which I think is an absolutely brilliant name. I'm, I'm so glad that that is true. Now, hedgehogs give birth in June and July and they can have four or five young. When the baby hoglets are born, they are very small, about five or seven centimetres, and they're all pink and wrinkly. They don't have spines. It takes a day or two for their spines to start poking through. Young hedgehogs leave their nest when they're around three or four weeks old and they go on foraging trips with their mother. And after about 10 days of foraging with mum, they will wander off on their own. So very well done if you got that answer correct. If you said it was true, one point to you. Now, we are coming to the final question of our final round. Are you ready, guys? Question four. Hedgehogs are, of course, one of the few mammals here in the UK that are true hibernators. So right now they're tucked away in their winter nest, waiting out the cold winter months. So mostly we'll see hedgehogs in spring and summer when they might pay a visit to our gardens. Now this week, we've been learning about some of the ways that we can help hedgehogs that visit us. But which of these is not a good way to help hedgehogs? A, build them a hedgehog house. B, leave milk out for them. C, make a hedgehog hole in your garden. Which of those is not a good way to help hedgehogs? A little tricky, isn't it? Because I think they do all sound like quite good ideas again, don't they? But one of them isn't very helpful. So which is it? Build a hedgehog house, leave milk out for them, or make a hedgehog hole in your garden fence? Well, have a guess. You've got three options if you're not quite sure, but we can feel the answer is in fact B leave milk out for them. That might seem like a good idea, but hedgehogs have trouble digesting milk. It gives them a bit of an upset tummy. So it's not a good idea to leave milk out, although they do like a nice shallow bowl of water when the weather is very hot and dry. But those other things, making log piles, dry leaves in your garden can help uh, hedgehogs. It can give them a place to nest. You could even try building them a little hedgehog house to hibernate in. There are some great tips on our website about how to build your own hedgehog house. And finally, those hedgehog holes, they are a good idea because hedgehogs like to wander at night. They can travel one to two kilometers looking for food through our gardens, through our parks. So by making a very little hole at the bottom of our fences, we can help them on their journey. Although obviously we need to get permission from our adults and from our neighbours if we share a garden fence as well. So congratulations. If you guessed that answer correct, you can give yourselves one point. Very well done. But it's the end of our quiz. It's all over. So it's time to tot up those final scores and let us know them in the YouTube comments. But do remember, you've got to add your team captain scores to yours as well. So let's bring all of our team captains back to find out how they did in that final round and overall. Welcome back, all of you. How did you find that final round? How did we all do? Let's find out. So let's find out first of all, um, Let's find out from, ooh, who should we go to first? Let's go to Tom, I think. Tom, what's your, what's your final score? How did you do? Well, we did really well in that last round. We learned a lot about hedgehogs during Homework Club this week, especially how to look after them too. So we've got a total score of seven points for the whole quiz. That is fantastic. Really well done, Team Woodlouse. So if you joined Team Woodlouse, you get to add seven points to your own score. Congratulations. And how about Team Hedgehog? How did we do? 
we did really well we got a fantastic seven points overall we were able to get some uh, great questions in that last round obviously we know about hedgehogs <laughs> <laughs> yeah you you had a bit of an unfair advantage in that in that final round didn't you team hedgehog but very well done seven points so you if you're in team hedgehog you can add those seven points to your final score as well and last but by no means least Team Mountain here, how do we do? Well, I've been practicing my Makaton, so I knew what the sign was for Hedgehog, uh, but there were definitely some answers in that round that were news to me. I didn't know as much about Hedgehogs as I thought, uh, but I got another two points, so that's eight points in total. Congratulations there to Team Mountain Hair. We have an overall winner. It's Team Mountain Hair with eight points. Very well done. Very well done, though, to all of our teams. You all did fantastically. So if you're in Team Mountain Hair, you get to add those eight points to your own score. So it is now time to tell us all your final scores. You can post them in our YouTube comments if you are watching on YouTube. Congratulations to all of you. While you're letting us know your scores, don't forget our homework club activities are announced daily at 9.30. You can find them on our web webpage, but also on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at NHM underscore learn. And do remember to share your work and your stories with us using the hashtag NHM Homework Club. And we'll try to show some of them in our live quiz next week as well. But I can see we've got some scores coming in. Oh, lots of excellent scores. Oh, and I've got seven out of, tw uh, out of 12. That's fantastic. Oh, 12 plus eight, 20 points from NHM. Brilliant. We've got some fantastic scores coming in. Nigel, um, your namesake, Nigel, scored 20 overall. So brilliant. You all did very well done indeed. You should all give yourselves a massive round of applause. Very well done to everyone taking part at home, but also very well done to all of our wonderful team captains. Before we leave today, I think we should have a final word from each of our team captains. Do we have any final words for our teams? Let's start with Aisha, Team Hedgehog. Hey, thanks so much, guys, for joining Team Hedgehog. I hope you had as much fun as we did. You all did really, really, really well. I can see in the comments you've got some fantastic scores. Really, really well done today. <laughs> Thank you, Team Hedgehog. And let's go to Team Woodlouse. Any final thoughts for your teammate? Oh, thanks. Those of you who joined Team Woodlouse, we have our strength in numbers. Oh, if, well, I'm not a curling Woodlouse or I would curl up and roll away. But uh, I'm more impressed with Nigel. Gosh, that's two weeks in a row, Nigel. You've, you've done it. Well done. <laughs> yeah, Nigel is really on a roll with these quizzes. So excellent. We, maybe we'll, we'll go for a hat trick next week. We, we never know. Tim Mountain Hair, any final thoughts before we before we say goodbye? Well, thanks for joining Team Mountain Hair. I hope you had fun. Uh, let's see if we can continue this winning streak in the, the coming quizzes. Uh, and remember, if you're going for a winter walk, make sure you wrap up nice and warm in a winter coat like a hair has. <laughs> Thank you, Nigel. That is fantastic advice. And a final thanks to all of our team captains. They did such a brilliant job. Hopefully, we'll see all of our team captains next week. But we'll say goodbye to them for now. And thank you to all of you for joining us at home. Congratulations for all of your great scores. We hope that you enjoyed taking part and that you'll join us again next week. Now, our next theme, theme for Homework Club is oceans. But if you do want to catch up on our winter wildlife activities from this week gone by, head to our web page today or over the weekend. They will still be there until Monday morning so you can have a go at some of our winter wildlife activities. Thank you again so much for joining us. We hope to see you again next week for our quiz all about oceans. Bye for now. <laughs>